Yes, yes. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. My name is Pastor Marcus, but let's get this party started off right. Let's get in our knees and uh, let's thank the Lord and pray. Lord, I thank you so much for today, Lord. I thank you that uh, we get this chance to come and celebrate you, sing, and chat, and laugh, and talk, and pray, and cry, Lord. Just, we just invite you here today, Lord, as we honor you. Praise in Jesus in your name. Amen. Amen. Say hello to somebody next to you. Give them a hug. Give them a kiss. Not my wife. Leave her alone. I'll kiss my wife. Super excited to be here today. We know that Christmas is around the corner. I don't know how many of you guys got your Christmas shopping done yet. Right? I'm there. I don't know. Thank God for online. I saw this Facebook post that really wraps it up and ties it up in a nice little bow. It had two columns. On one side it said mom or wife. On the other side it said dad or husband. And on mom's side's Christmas list, it said dad, son, daughter, dog, in-laws, parents, neighbor, mailman, cousins, teachers, about 30. And on the right-hand side it was one name for dad and it said mom. And I'm almost there yet. I haven't finished my shopping yet. But it's coming. It's coming. Once again, my name is Marcus, Pastor Marcus, one of the pastors here. And um, I know a lot of you because I've been around for quite a while. But for those of you guys who don't know me, you really don't know me unless you know my family. So I'm going to put a picture there of my crew there. Let's hear it. Aww. I call them my four little half-breeds. To your left is Diego. He loves parkour. He loves sports. He's 15 years old. To your right, on there on my left, on right hand side is my daughter Macy. She loves worship and music. And to in the pink hat, you have Kayla, who's 12 years old. She loves cooking, which is great because I love eating. So it's a great combination. A gift from the Lord. Then you've got Marco. He loves punching his brother in the gut. That's what he loves to do. And the beautiful lady behind me, it's my wife Tracy, and she loves me. Thank God. Thank God she loves me. So that's my family. If you see them running around, tell them to quit goofing off and leave my wife alone. Like I said, I've been around for a while. As a matter of fact, I've been part of the rock from the get-go. Anybody here from the San Diego State Montezuma days? Yes. Yes, so I'm from back in the day, right? Here's a little proof of that right there. Yes, go ahead and laugh. Get it out the way. Yes, that, is, that was in 2000. And yes, that is a sweater vest. <laughs> they used to be in style. They went out of style. And hopefully they came back in style because Pastor Greg was sporting one today for announcements. <laughs> so, Pastor Greg, I hope they're back in style. If not, good job, good effort to bring it back in style. We support you in that. All right, so I'll get straight to the point. I know what's on everybody's mind today. Star Wars. <laughs> or as we say in the Latino war, uh, in the Latino world, Star Wars. With, we know, right, the famous Artudito, <laughs> Obi-Juan Kenobi, and for some reason, it's El Chewbacca. <laughs> Not to be confused with Chupacabra. That's a whole different show there. But I took my wife and my two boys out to watch Star Wars. It was great. You know, of course, you have those people with lightsabers in line. Like, one guy almost chopped my hand off. It was close. Capes, the whole get up. It was great. We had a great, great time. Spoiler alert. So if you don't want to hear it, that's good news. Listen up. No Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. But as I was watching Star Wars, you know, it just, it just really hit me that the whole story is the saga of good versus evil, of sin and redemption, and, and darkness, and light. And that's pretty much what we're going to chat about today. We're going to talk about that, that battle we have with sin, 
that battle we have with wanting forgiveness to be new. The title of today's message is very easy. It's one, two, three, forgiven. What's the name of the title? One, two, three, forgiven. That's awesome. That, you guys are smart. The subtitle is How to Win When It Comes to Sin. What's the subtitle? So we're going to have one, two, three points of how to be forgiven, and we're going to support that with how do we win when it comes to sin, because we know that's a battle that we all want to win. Open up your Bibles, please, to the book of John, chapter 8. The book of John, chapter 8. I remember when I was chasing my wife around back in the day. We met at San Diego State. Uh, we both studied business there. Well, she studied business. I just went to class and business classes and actually studied them. But I learned there was a fine line between chasing and courting a girl and going after a girl and... Harassment. <laughs> I'd leave notes on her car. There's my wife. Tracy, lift your hand up. Come on, come on. There she goes. She said yes. She said yes eventually. I would leave notes on her car. I would leave flowers. I would just chase her around and do little things. And I remember as we were moving forward to really solidifying our relationship, we went to go visit some friends in Lake Alam Alamore. Alamore. Snake something. Lake Almanor up in Northern California, and it was a beautiful, beautiful setting. So we went out on the lake together, and we took a boat, and we started to drive the boat. Would you drive? I don't know what you drive. We started to boat the boat, whatever you do with it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, what a beautiful setting. What can I do to impress this beautiful lady that I'd like to spend the rest of my life with? I know what I can do. Let's floor it. Let's go as fast as we can go. My wife, quiet, demure, shy. I'm going, honey, let's go. So I'm on the boat, and I'm zzz, zzz, and we're going across. I felt like I was on Miami Vice, like trying to, you know, escape the police. We're skipping over the water, and it's great. And my poor wife is bouncing, like, oh, yeah, let's go. Speaking of bouncing, let's give it up for Susan in the choir. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Keep an eye out for her, 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 her. Her, her physical health fitness shop coming up, like, like a choir CrossFit maybe. She was like <laughs> lunging and thrusting. and I thought she pulled a hammy and said, like, oh, hold up. Perfectly. <laughs> she was breaking it down. So we are on the boat. Right? I'm like, this is great. She must be really loving this. Right? And I didn't see the panic in her eyes because I'm dumb. You know, and we're on the water. I'm like, what can I do next? What can I do next? I know. I'll let her drive. So come on, honey, take the will, take the will. Keep it forward. And we're bouncing. I go, all right. Then what can be better? What can be better? How can I really impress her? Because that's what I wanted to do. I said, I know what I'll do. I'll jump out of the boat at full speed. She'll love that. So I make sure she's looking at me, right? All right, she's bouncing. She can barely keep her head straight. She's looking at me. And I just look at her and I dive out of the water head first. <laughs> Boom. My head gets stuck in the water. My body gets flung over the water, boom, boom, somersault after somersault after somersault. And I'm out of the water, I'm in pain, and I lift my head up I'm like, yeah, I got this woman now. She's going to love that. And she comes back, she drives the boat around, and I'm there like expecting like, wow, we should get married next week. And I get in the boat, she goes, you idiots. And you want to marry me and have my kids? There is no way. I'm like, wait, hold up. In my world, that was impressive. <laughs> what had happened was I miss the mark. Everybody say, miss the mark. And basically, you guys, that's a quick illustration of what sin is. Sin comes from this Greek word called harmatia, which basically means this, missing the mark. That simple, missing the mark. Matter of fact, it is so easy to sin. The Bible tells us in James 4.17... If we know good and don't do it, that's sin. Let's dive into our story today. John chapter 8. Then they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. 
At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people were gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. Let's pause it right there. Here's the scene. Jesus has started his ministry. And he's doing amazing things. He'd recently walked on water. He'd recently fed 5,000. He'd recently just shown amazing things. And now the Pharisees and the religious people, they're tripping. They're worried because they're losing support. And they're all following this guy named Jesus who's doing these amazing things. And Jesus is doing things with, settle down. It's not my time yet. They were trying to kill him. They were trying to incarcerate him. And they were after Jesus. So in this story, we're going to see a situation where they think they've got Jesus right where they want him. But of course, they can't get him because Jesus is perfect. Verse 3 says this. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees, who were the religious people, brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. So now they've got this woman they think they're going to get Jesus, and they got this woman who sinned. You know, we often think the sin of that dark, ugly, evil, scary stuff, and that is all sin. But so is, once again, guys, just missing the mark. To illustrate this, we're going to play a little game, and we're going to need a volunteer from the church. Let me see your hands up. Oh, hands will go up now. Here's the prize, the $100 bills. Now let me see some hands up in this place. Right there with the crown on and the princess, you, let's go. Come on down. Come on down. Woo-hoo. Come on down. That's what I'm talking about. What's your name? Keisha. Keisha, I'm Marcus. I'm Marcus. Nice to meet you. Let me introduce you to Ben. This is Benjamin Franklin. Hello there. All right, all right. Keisha, why don't you come on down here? It's going to play a very easy game. Let's give it up for Pastor Greg in the sweater vest today, ladies and gentlemen. It's this simple. You're going to get one dart to toss over here, and if your dart hits the bullseye, which is perfection, right there, all black showing, then you win the $100 bill. Here we go. Now I'll show you how it's done just so you can focus. All right, it's this easy. There's a bullseye right there. Oh, safety first. Thanks, Greg. Safety first. Here we go. We may be generous, but we are not negligent. I was practicing last night. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, just show so where we got there. Close one, close one. All right. All right. Almost, almost. Here we go. Let me move that Keisha for you. Let's give Keisha a little table drum roll. Keisha, you forgot your crown, but you do get a $15 gift certificate to Starbucks. God bless you, Keisha. Thank you for playing. God bless you. That was close. This was actually the one list, one name on my list, my wife. This is for her, honey. I'm, I'm glad that she didn't win, Keisha. Appreciate, appreciate that, Keisha. Thanks, Keisha. You see, you guys, God's standard is perfection. That's it. He's God. He's perfect. Anything less than perfection, anything less of that hitting the mark right on is simply sin. If we know what's right and we don't do it, that is sin. They bring this lady up and she is caught cold, busted, right there in sin. Well, let's see what God does. She's brought up, and she does not deny her sin. The first thing we need to do, guys, with how to win when it comes to sin, repeat after me. Everybody say, admit it. Everybody say, admit it. What's the first step? Admit it. We have to know, you guys, that we are imperfect people. 1 John 1, 9 tells us this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. 
and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let me share this again. If we confess, every say confess. Yeah. Every say admit. Yeah. Say confess. Yeah. If we confess our sins, you guys, he is faithful and just and will forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness. I really realized how sin is kind of born in us when I had babies. When they're born, they're cute. For about like 15 minutes. They're not all cute. Frankly, some of them look like little rodents. But they're still in a cute way. And the babies are born and they smell good and they the little cooing and it's great and you can't believe it. And then you start watching what comes out of that child. Right? Then you start changing diapers. You're like, really this? Right? The mucus. The marconium. You guys know what that is? The parents know what that is. That space like black tar goo that comes out. Think about it. The stuff that comes out of us is nasty. Can I hear amen? We're imperfect, guys. We're full of sin. We are jacked up. We are wrong. And these guys think they caught the Lord Jesus. We got this lady, this adulteress. They brought her up. One quick question. Where's the guy that was caught in adultery? Uh, the ladies, just let you know, Pastor Miles Hart, two th- get ready for 2016 because he wants to unleash the power of women in this church. Get ready. So here this lady is, the religious guys want to keep her down. And in this story, there's three mi- basic characters. There is Jesus who represents life, forgiveness, love, light. There is the lady that represents us. Fallen, full of mistakes. And there are all these others, those people that call her an adultery, the Pharisees, the religious, they represent death. Guys, don't get religion caught up and mistaken for relationship. Right? This ring I have, um, I pour a ring, it is a symbol, but it does not mean I'm married. If I don't treat my wife right and I don't have that relationship with her, this ring is useless. And it's very easy for us to be religious. It's very easy for us to come to church. It's very easy for us to worship. It's very easy for us to listen to the message. But what God wants for us is a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. And it first starts with admitting we need him. Amen. So here this lady is, full of sin. They think they have her right where they want her and Jesus right where they want him. Let's pick it up at three again. It says that the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commands us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any of you without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on his ground. Now, I don't know if this is what he did, but this is in my little world what happened. There's all these people, right, that gathered around to kill this lady. They wanted to destroy her like the enemy wants to destroy you, me, my marriage, my relationship with my kids, my relationship with God, this church. He wants to destroy. He's their accuser. She's surrounded by these men. And Jesus gets down on his knee, starts Writing, I think he might be writing names. Bill, what were you doing watching them commit adultery? Steve, and he starts writing stuff that they start seeing their name 
and their list of sins. This is not what the Bible says, just in my imagination. But he did something. The law was, if you caught someone in the act of adultery, you could stone them to death. But the people that had to start the stoning were the two witnesses, and you had to have two witnesses. So he says, all right, you guys want to stone her? You guys want to live by the law? Starts writing down stuff. They start backing away. And the Lord tells her, let's keep reading and see how good, how good God is. Let's pick it up at verse 9. At this, those who, were, who began to go away one at a time, the older one first, until only Jesus was left with this woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? No one has condemned you. Eleven. No one, sir, she said. Then Jesus says, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, now go and leave your life of sin. What's the first thing we got to do? We got to what? Number two, very easy, say quit it. First, we got to admit it. Next, Jesus tells her, go and sin no more. Everybody say, quit it. What's number two? Stop sinning. It's very simple, you guys. The reason God wants us to stop the sin isn't because it makes him feel better. He's perfect. You guys following me? Everything he has for us, everything he desires for us is because he loves us. My dad used to be a Green Beret, Pentecostal preacher. He was Mexican. He still is Mexican. He's Mexican. <laughs> Estar Wars, that's where we're back to, Estar Wars. And my dad did not spare the rod. And I remember, I always knew when I was in trouble because he was calling my name. Right? And then we would go to the room, and I would get a belt. And sometimes he made me get my own belt, like the own belt. I would go, like, to the terry cloth robe and bring that belt, and I get an Olympic one. All right, Dad. Nope, the leather one. And he would spank me because he wanted to change in my behavior. But ultimately, my dad wanted to change in my heart. My dad was trying to protect me, to change my behavior from destructive behavior. I don't know how many of you guys got spanked back in the day, but I used to get those big crying, right, the, the convulsing, right. But the best thing about a good spanking is the nap afterwards. Oh, man. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The spanking naps are the best. Give it a shot, parents. Give it a shot. And I would go to my room, and I would take a nap and clean my face, and my dad would wipe the tears from my eyes, and he would say, Mijo, I love you. I correct you because I loved you. And I understood that because I knew it was wrong, and I'd go take a nap, and I'd wake up, and I'd go outside, right? I'd go outside, and I'd play. We'd play football or soccer, and I'd, with my, I'd be with my friends, and once in a while, I'd go, and they go, ah, uh, you just got a spanking, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. But ultimately, my God wanted a change in my heart that would lead to a change of behavior. And that's what God wants us. He wants us to quit it. If you took two lives, right, forget the spirituality, forget eternity, which is the most important part. But you had guy A that broke all the Ten Commandments. And you had the guy B that just lived by the Ten Commandments. And guy A, you know what, had other gods before God, had idols, used God's name, used God's name in vain, didn't obey the Sabbath. He also, disobedient to his parents, he murdered, he was adulterous, he stole, he lied, and he was never satisfied because he was covetous. What's the quality of life of that guy? He has no peace. He's cheating on his wife. He has a horrible relationship with his parents because he doesn't respect them. His kids probably have a horrible relationship with him. He's murdered, so he's running from the law. He's committed adultery, so his wife's relationship with him is terrible. He steals, he lies, and he's never satisfied. What is the quality of that life? It stinks. 
Take a guy that doesn't do that. He has such a higher quality of life. You know, what God wants for you guys, what God wants for me is good. Can I hear amen? amen? It's because he loves us. He's not trying to take away our joy. He's not trying to take away fun. We need to be different when God is in our lives, guys. Once we quit, we need to change. Acts 3.19 says this. Repent then. Everybody say repent. Amen. Repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repent. Repent comes from a word that means basically change your mind. We need to change our mind about how we behave. We need to be different. One thing is to admit it, and another thing is actually to stop it, to quit it, to change. Charles Spurgeon is great, great man of God. Great man says this. Listen closely. If you are renewed by grace and were to meet your old self, I am sure that you would be very anxious to get out of his company. I know that's true for me. If I were to meet the old Mark, it's like, ah, I don't think we can hang out tonight, buddy. I don't have time for you because God has changed me. You know, I've got a visual of what God wants to do with our pain, with our sorrow. I've got a little video to show how simple it is. And it starts off with a story. My son, not too long ago, was in some emotional difficulty and struggling with something. So God put in my heart to take him to the beach. And we went to the beach and we were driving there. He didn't know what we were going to do there. And we sat down and we chatted about God's grace, about God's forgiveness, and how God doesn't look at you that way and he wants to forgive you and he wants to change your behavior and he wants to cleanse you and make you new. So I very simply, in my, with my fingers, you'll see it pop here, I wrote the word S-I-N in the sand. And I said, son, God wants to bring his wave of forgiveness and take away all those pain and leave that for you in your heart. It was just a great visual, you guys, and that's what God wants to do with us. Which leads me to my, ter my third point. The first point is what do we do first? The second, what do we do? Third is very simple, you guys. Everybody say forget it. Everybody say forget it. Everybody say forget it. Next he wants us to do is forget it. Listen to this verse. It says this. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let me read it again. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. It means this, that your sin is so far removed from you that it is completely gone. That's how God views us. So I know a lot of us in this time, you know, we've, maybe we come to church. And maybe we're faithful to the rock, maybe not. Maybe we worship, maybe we don't. But you guys, coming to church isn't what saves us. It's receiving Lord Christ as our Savior and not only saying it, but letting it change our lives. Taking the Lord our sin and saying, God, I confess my sin. Then changing our mind on how to behave, right, and being differently. And third, you guys, enjoying the freedom of being a new creation. That's what God wants from us. But we need to get there. You know, this guy isn't a theologian, but Jimmy Buffett has a good quote. And it says, it's a fine line between Saturday night and Sunday morning. In other words, there's a lot of us Saturday night act one way and do one thing. And come Sunday morning, we act a different way. And next Saturday night comes and you're a different person and Sunday morning comes, and you're a different person. You know, that's not what God wants. 
He wants to take us and make us new, guys. He wants to take all of our pain, all of our sorrow, all of our doubts, all of our fears, and as far as the east is from the west, he wants to remove it from him. And some of you guys need to receive that today. Some of you guys are stuck in the admitted stage, right? I come to church, I know I'm a sinner, I need some help. And some of you guys are in the second stage, quit it. You, you, you've quit it, you know what? You, you, you've stopped that behavior. But some of you guys need to get to that third stage, which is forget it. Whatever that pain is, whatever that mistake was, whatever that sorrow was, you still have it hidden in your heart. The devil still comes to your mind and tells you about it. You guys know what I'm talking about? I don't know if you guys remember Kazoo from the Flintstones. That little, right? And then you remember Fred used to go around and he wanted to do something wrong, and, right? And then there was like the little angel on his, on his, you know, yeah, get that gift for Wilma. And there was like the devil, no, forget Wilma, she doesn't deserve it. Some of us constantly are struggling with that, that devil on our shoulder, reminding us of, of our past, reminding us of, of our pain and our sin. And God wants to leave today with the greatest gift of all, you guys, which is salvation. And which is a brand new life, a free gift of salvation. As Pastor Tim was sharing at Toys for Joy, I was listening to him. I was really encouraged. And he was telling everybody, you know what, kids, you're going to get this toy today. But where is it going to end up? I don't know where my G.I. Joe with super kung fu grip is. I don't know where my Star Wars figures are from 1975. I don't know where my Schwinn bike was, is. It's all faded away. It's all going to fade away. But God's love for you guys, God's love for us, God's love for me will never, ever fade away. It would be a shame if we left these doors and we didn't completely receive that. You know, I ran across this great story of this police officer in Plano, Texas. He pulled over this guy by the name of Hayden Carlo because his license plate was uh, expired. And when he pulled over Hayden, Hayden was really stressed out because Hayden, the reason he didn't have his license plate registered is because he didn't have the money for it. But he still was breaking the law. So the police officer hears the story. We always got a story when cops pull us over, huh? I sometimes want to tell them I'm pregnant, but I don't think he'll believe me. And, and Hayden tells him, police officer, here's the situation. Police officer hears him, goes to his car, comes back with the citation, not a ticket, but when Hayden opens up the citation, it's a $100 bill. He says, God bless you. Can you imagine the relief of Hayden thinking he's going to get another bill? He's messed up again, but as opposed to, right, that conviction, he gets grace. Well, God offers you guys and all of us something much greater today, which is forgiveness, which is a brand new life. And all he wants us to do is first admit it. Next, he wants us to change our minds and quit it. And ultimately, he blots our sins away. And lastly, he wants us to forget it. Why don't we bow our heads and close our eyes. If God spoke to you during that sermon and you feel like you want to ask Christ to be your Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. One, admit and accept that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sin and rose from the dead. And then confess yourself as a sinner and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. So if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I just want you to just look at me right now and pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart, knowing that God knows you and loves you very much. Say, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner. I know the penalty of my sin is death, and I don't want to die and go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose from the dead for my sin. And I confess myself a sinner and ask him to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin and fill me with the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 
If you prayed that prayer, you just ask Christ to be your Savior, we want to know, and we want to email you some resources. So if you just prayed that prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, click on the link that just appeared, and we want to send you some free resources. God bless you, and we'll see you in heaven.